house really the only coffee in the world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. <laughs> It's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons. Brought to you by America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House. The coffee that's always good to the last drop. be or not to be? That's quite a question, isn't it? Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles, that's a question too, and quite a problem. In Springfield, in the white frame house on Maple Street, the Andersons are old hands when it comes to questions and problems. Big problems, little problems, they've had their share of them all. Like this. I've never seen anything like it in my whole life. Jim. Hmm? Oh, bless, O oh Lord, this food to our use and our lives to thy service. Amen. Amen. All right, Kathy, eat your dinner. Say, Dad. Tell me golf is a game of skill. Dad. He couldn't do anything wrong, and I couldn't do anything right. Dad. What is it, bud? Look at Betty. What about her? Betty. Betty. Hmm? What? What's the matter with you? Nothing, Father. Nothing at all. Well, stop daydreaming and eat your dinner. Yes, Father. She still thinks she's Camille. All right, Kathy. <laughs> I think she's nuts. But... <laughs> well, holy cow, Mom. She walks around coughing all the time. Never mind, Bud. Just eat your dinner and be quiet. Holy cow. You know what he did on the sixth hole, Margaret? He sliced one out of bounds. It hit a tree and bounced right back on the green. Yes, dear. That's a great way to win the semifinals, isn't it? Skill. Huh. Daddy. What is it, Kathy? Why did they call Marguerite the Lady of the Camellias? Because that's what she wore, camellias. Now forget about it and eat your dinner. Gee whiz. Betty, will you please pass the butter? Father. What is it, Betty? It's very kind of you, monsieur, to speak to me so gently. What? <laughs> Here is the butter. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. Betty, what in the name of... What's gotten into you? Why, nothing, Father. Well, then stop it. The play is over. You were wonderful. You were sensational. But it's over. Now, come on back to Earth. It's all right, Jim. It may take her a few days, but she'll get over it. I know, but a man can stand just so much... We've had Camille for breakfast, dinner, and supper for the last month, and I'm getting sick of it. If this keeps up, she won't be in any more plays, and that's a promise. What a play. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Armand, I love you. Nobody even got shot or anything. Father. What is it, Betty? Do you know who was in the audience last night? We were. A talent scout from Hollywood. Wouldn't it be wonderful? <sighs> Betty. Yes, Father? Don't fall into the swimming pool. What? Betty, I saw the show last night, and, well, this is a practical world. You've got to realize... Jim. Margaret, I'm merely trying to explain to Jim, her... Jim, she's so young. Let her dream, just for a little while. Well, I think the entire thing is ridiculous. Me too. Eat your dinner and be quiet. Gee whiz. <laughs> I'm going to dedicate myself, my entire life, to the theater. Bud, pass the potatoes, please. Do you want to know why? No. Come on, Bud. Here you are, Dad. Thank you. Because there are moments when I lose myself in that dream. Because there are days when I am weary of the life I lead and imagine that I have another. Because in the midst of my turbulent existence, though my reason, my pride, my senses are alive, my heart is so tired of never finding tender understanding. Little do people care. Ah, shut up. <laughs> but, mother, 
Why, he's sad. Bud, how dare you speak that way to your sister? Well, holy cow, Mom. Jim, will you please say something to Bud? Uh, hello, Bud. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Jim Anderson, it is not funny, and I don't care what Betty did. There's no excuse... Your mother's right, Bud. You, uh, shouldn't have said it. I know, Dad, but good gravy. Tell Betty you're sorry, and, uh, uh, well, go ahead. I'm sorry, Betty. I shouldn't have said what I said. You want me to forgive you? Dear one, what is there to forgive? <laughs> In a world such as ours... Betty, for Pete's sake, cut it out. But Father... You've been spouting Camille around here until I've got it coming out of my ears. Now stop it. Very well. But when I'm a famous movie star and they ask me who was responsible for my success... Margaret, she isn't just counting her chickens. She's selling next year's eggs. <laughs> Betty, we mustn't raise our hopes too high. What do you mean, our hopes? Bud, that was the doorbell. I know. Well, answer it. Holy cow. <laughs> you think there was a law that nobody else was allowed to open the door? Margaret, you certainly don't think that Betty has a chance of being a movie star, do you? Why not? I've seen certain people a lot less talented than Betty. But she isn't trained for it. She isn't prepared. Father, they train you. And she and Janie Lickett are both preparing. What? Kathy. Well, you and Janie were trying on sweaters and she said... Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, why don't you go in and do your homework? I haven't finished my milk. Well, finish it. And behave yourself. Hi, Betty. Oh, Billy, come on hello, in. Hello, Billy. Glad to see you. Hello, Mr. Anderson, Mrs. Anderson. Beautiful evening, isn't it? Oh, hello, Billy. How are your mother and father? Just fine, thank you. Uh, would you care for a piece of cake? No, thanks. We've got to run along. Janie Liggett's throwing a big party for the dramatic club. Sort of a celebration, you know. Yes, Betty was telling us. Bud, what are you doing out there? I'm waiting for the doorbell to ring again. <laughs> Stop being such a smart aleck and come back here. Unless you'd rather skip your dinner. Well, every time I sit down, the doorbell rings, and I'm the only one who ever gets to answer it, so... Sit down and finish your dinner. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, we were just talking about the play. Weren't we, Jim? Uh, yes, we certainly were. We thought it was wonderful. Didn't we, dear? Yes, we, uh... Certainly we're talking about it. Billy, tell him what the club critique said about my performance. Well, um, as the director of the various productions, I run a critique after each performance, a sort of a symposium. And we're quite ruthless in our critical analysis, in a constructive way, of course. Of course. What did he say? Never mind, just drink your milk. I drank it. Well, drink Bud's. <laughs> Go ahead, Billy. Well, as I was saying, we decided that while Betty's performance lacked the polish of a more experienced artiste, it had warmth, spirit, and a certain objective maturity you can only describe as éclat. You don't say. <laughs> oh, yes. Why, when she was dying, didn't you notice the, the brilliant resonance in her cough? She had a timber you'll find in mighty few Camilles. Well, she comes by it naturally. Her grandfather was a champion hog collar. <laughs> Jim, Billy and Betty are being quite sincere and earnest Well, so am I Just because you can cough loud That doesn't mean they're going to send you to Hollywood <laughs> Who said anything about Hollywood? Billy Smith, you told me there was a talent scout in the audience Woman's place is in the home Caring for her family Sharing the joys and sorrows of the man she loves Mother, have you ever heard anything more prehistoric? Betty, I really don't think... Just a minute, Margaret. Betty, this is one quarrel you aren't going to drag us into. If you and Billy want to fight, do it on your own time. But, Father, he's so pig-headed. I am not pig-headed. I just believe in equal rights for men. That's all. <laughs> Betty, if you're going to the Liggetts, go. I spent a whole month preparing for Camille. Betty. And then he has the nerve to tell me. Betty. Yes, Father? Go. Well, come on, Billy. Good night, everybody. Good, good night, night Billy. Billy. I won't over. be out too late, Mother. All right, dear. Have a good time. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Gosh, Betty, I didn't mean to get you all excited. I'm not excited, but there's no reason why I can't take a screen test if I want to. But why? I told you in the very beginning. 
Of all the idiotic arguments I've ever heard... Well, at least it's a little different. Daddy! What is it, Kathy? Why doesn't Billy want Betty to go into the movies? I don't know, baby. I guess he just wants her to stay in Springfield. Why? So they can smooch, Dopey. Bud. <laughs> well, if she doesn't know... Bud, if there are any clinical replies to be given around here, please let me give them. Holy cow. Kathy, you see, when you're very young and in love, you dream up all kinds of things. Now, actually, there isn't any reason for Betty and Billy... There, you see. What? I told you it was going to ring again, and you said I was being a smart aleck. I don't know. Isn't there going to be one evening we can go through without all this fuss and excitement? Bud, stop making such an issue of it and answer the door. I'll answer it myself. He can finish his dinner. I'll go, Dad. Never mind. Just do as you're told. Has to walk a full 20 feet to get to the front door you think it was going to kill him. I'll pour your coffee, dear. All right, Margaret. I'll be right back. Mr. Anderson? Yes? My name is Kay. Alfred Kay. May I come in? Uh... Why, yes. Uh, come right in. Thank you. You probably heard that I was in town. Well, quite frankly, no. Oh, I, I thought you had. Uh, Mr. Anderson, I represent the Metropolitan Picture Corporation of Hollywood. Metropolitan? You mean you, you're the talent scout? Oh, you did hear about me. The talent? Margaret, he's here. He came. Jim, what is it? The talent scout, he's it. I mean, he's here. He's right here now. Mr. Anderson, there's no need to get excited. What, what, I... what on earth are you talking What's about? What's the matter, Dad? I want to see, too. Margaret, uh, this is my wife, Mrs. K. I mean... Uh, uh... <laughs> Mrs. Anderson, I'm Alfred K. of Metropolitan Pictures. Oh, no. Holy cow. Gosh. Now, let's not get excited, children. Let's just keep our heads. <laughs> just to... Uh... Keep our heads. Bud, call the Liggetts immediately. Tell them to send Betty home at once. Okay, Mom. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't go to all that trouble, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, it's no trouble, Mr. K. No trouble at all. Uh, let's go into the living room where we can be more comfortable. Oh, thank you. That'll be very nice. You can't imagine how excited we are, Mr. K. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I can. After all, a thing like this doesn't happen every day, does it? <laughs> well, that's better. Don't I get to say hello? Oh, I'm sorry, Kathy. Uh, Mr. K, this is our younger daughter, Kathleen. Yes. <laughs> yes. I noticed her in the audience last night. How are you, Kathleen? I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. Oh, sweet child. <laughs> Mr. Anderson. Hey, Mom. Betty isn't there yet, but I told them about the talent scout, and they said they'd send her home the second that she came in. That's fine, bud, just fine. Uh, we're very proud of Betty, Mr. K. But uh, I'm not sure she wants to go into pictures. You see... Well, that needn't bother us, Mr. Anderson. I want to talk to you about a screen test for Kathleen. Kathy? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> A cup of coffee keeps right on making good news these days. In stores everywhere, grocers have been featuring Maxwell House at lower prices. And now they're featuring lower prices still on America's favorite brand of coffee. Something we're all happy to see. You, your grocer, and Maxwell House, too. Now the world's most famous coffee flavor comes to you at the lowest prices in months. Wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor you can count on cup after cup day after day. Because with Maxwell House coffee, we have just one aim, to bring you the most in flavor and satisfaction every pound you buy, to bring you truly good coffee at the lowest possible price. That's why you find so much more flavor for your money in Maxwell House, your money's worth and more in real pleasure. And at today's prices, it's more than ever today's coffee buy. Look for that familiar blue Maxwell House tin in your store. Featured these days at still lower prices. The lowest prices in months. 
See how much you enjoy a cup of coffee that's always good to the last drop. A very few minutes have passed in the white frame house on Maple Street. And the status is not what you would call exactly quo. Betty is on her way back from the Liggetts to meet the talent scout. And Billy Smith, who is jealous, doesn't want her to meet the talent scout. We think. But that's all right, because the talent scout has left anyway. And besides, he didn't want Betty, he wanted Kathy. And furthermore, well, you can see how, with just a little consideration and common sense, normal excitement can be completely controlled and turned into a sort of seething confusion, like this. But, Daddy, you said you didn't want me to go into the movies. I know, but you didn't have to tell him you'd rather be a lady wrestler. <laughs> well, I would. Jim, I'm worried. About what? About Betty. What are we going to tell her? What can we tell her? We'll tell her the truth, that's all. Jim, there are times when the truth can be very cruel, especially to an imaginative young girl. Well, I'm certainly not going to lie to her. Lying is a sin. <laughs> Kathy, why don't you dry up? Can't you see we've got a problem? Yes, Bud. <laughs> Kathleen, if you start that phony coughing again I'm sorry, Father I'll try to control myself Even though something deep within me Stop it <laughs> Margaret, if she's going to keep that up She I... won't, Jim Will you, Kathy? Will I what? Kathy, darling Mommy and Daddy have a great problem We need your help Boy, are you in trouble <laughs> But... Well, holy cow, if you have to count on that knothead... Mother! <laughs> but if you can't behave yourself, I'd suggest you go to bed. I'm sorry. Margaret, the plain truth of the matter is that the man wasn't impressed with Betty's performance. That's what we'll have to tell her. I know, Jim, but not right away. I still think he was a little out of his mind, telling me Kathy looked like a da Vinci cherub. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. I'm sorry, Daddy. I forgot. Margaret. Yes, dear? Do you suppose we made a mistake? We could have sent her all the way out to California. <laughs> Jim. What have you got against California? <laughs> you just keep it up, bud. That's all. When I get to be a lady wrestler... Kathy, please. <laughs> We have a very great favor to ask of you, and we haven't very much time. Margaret, I say you're making a mistake. Tell Betty the truth, and if she isn't big enough to take it... Jim, believe me, this is one time when the truth is a very dangerous thing. If we can just convince Betty that she doesn't want to go to Hollywood... I can just see that. We can try, Jim. If we succeed and she doesn't want to go, then it won't make any difference if she finds out about Kathy. In other words, you're going to put yourself at the mercy of that, uh, uh, cherub. <laughs> what else can we do? Dad, how would it be... Just a moment, bud, please. Kathy, will you promise not to say anything to Betty about Mr. K? Not even I'm a cherub? Not even that. Gee whiz. <coughs> <laughs> Kathy, I have here a list titled Damages for May. Kathleen Anderson. Four windows, one windshield, two rose bushes... One shrub. Is that just May? First half. <laughs> Gosh. Well? Okay, Mommy. I won't talk. Thank you, dear. Boy, parents can sure louse up your life. Kathy! Kathy. <laughs> Mother! We're in the living room, Betty. Remember, Kathy, not a word. Okay. Kathy. You mean I can't even call? I'm sorry we took so long, but you know how traffic is these days. We left the second Janie told us, but... Mother, where is he? Well, you see, dear... But Janie said the talent scout was here. She told me. Daddy sent him away. Father! Kathy. Well, I didn't tell her who. Bud, take Kathy upstairs. Come on, squirt. I don't want to go upstairs. I won't say anything. Come on, will ya? Well, stop pulling me. Why do you always have to pull me? 
me. <laughs> Father, you didn't send him away. Tell me you didn't send him away. I'm sorry, Betty, but I did. Oh, Father. Betty, your father and I felt it was... My the... entire life is ruined. Everything I'd hoped for, everything I'd planned. Betty, if you'd only try to understand... Understand? Mr. Anderson, this sort of treachery passes all understanding. What? As Betty's director, I say you have perpetrated a crime against the arts. Stolen from the silver screen, one of its most glittering gems. You have purloined... Wait a minute. <coughs> Which side are you on, anyway? You said you didn't want Betty to go into pictures. I said that? I? Did Svengali hide Trilby under a bushel basket? Did Cecil B. DeMille? Oh, go home. <laughs> Stop saying father. If you must know the truth... Jim, please. Margaret, if they're going to accuse me of having ruined the movie industry... Betty, whatever we did was for your good. You must know that. But after I'd worked so hard and so long, a whole month, and it's just thrown away. Honey, you aren't ready to be an actress. You haven't lived enough or suffered enough. I could have lived and suffered in Hollywood, couldn't I? <laughs> Betty's a great actress. One of the greatest I've ever directed. And I've had almost two years of it. Wait a minute, Billy. Betty, you know, you might think Springfield is pretty dull and monotonous. But this is where you belong. This is your home. That has nothing to do with it. I wanted a career. I wanted to be a success. And you spoiled everything. Did I? Betty, there's one thing you've got to learn. There are a great many kinds of career. Your mother has a career, a very fine career. Your mother and millions of women just like your mother. They've raised families. They've built homes. They've worked for their husbands and helped them in a thousand different ways. Without women like your mother, life would be a very difficult thing. True, being a wife and a mother isn't as glamorous as being a movie star, but the rewards are so much greater. I never heard of anybody getting an Oscar for being a mother. <laughs> well, they give out different rewards to mothers. They give a mother a baby's tears to carry in her heart. They give her laughter and love to comfort her on lonely nights. They give her dirty faces to wash and hems to let out. They give her the greatest collection of memories a woman can want. You can take all your picture stars, all your scientists, all your women who have made names for themselves in industry and commerce, and the most successful woman, the woman with the greatest possible career, is still the plain everyday mother. Hooray! Let's tell her, Dad. Jim. Just a minute, Margaret. Weren't you kids told to go upstairs? We are upstairs. But you didn't say we couldn't listen. <laughs> Well, go do your homework or something. Holy cow. I'll get it. Father. Yes, Betty? I'm sorry I was such a goon. Oh, you weren't at all, Betty. You just didn't understand. Being a mother is a very difficult thing. Very difficult indeed. Especially if you're a man. Yes. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, never mind. Betty, naturally, we realize that you're very disappointed. Oh, no, I'm not, Mother. Not really, I guess. Well, anyway, you've got something Janie Liggett hasn't got. They didn't want her to be a movie star. That's right. Wait until she hears I turned it down. Oh, Billy! Now, just a second, Betty. Let's not make a big thing out of this. Oh, who was that on the phone, Kathy? Oh, I took care of it. It was just a reporter from the Springfield Herald. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy. Yes, Father. What did he want? Oh, information about the screen test. Jim, you'd better call them back. Oh, he doesn't have to, Mommy. I told the man everything he wanted to know. Which is what? Well, he wanted to know if it was true that Miss Betty Anderson had been offered a screen test. And what did you tell him? I told him, yes. Oh. <laughs> and I told him she turned it down and he wanted to know why. So I told him. Kathy, what did you tell him? Oh, 
Well, just what you said. I told him that Betty didn't want to go to Hollywood. And he said, why? And I told him she was going to stay in Springfield on account of she was going to be a mother. <laughs> All across the country, grocers have been doing a pleasant job in recent weeks, putting lower price tags on Maxwell House coffee. And now those grocers are doing the job again. Yes, these days they're featuring Maxwell House at lower prices still, the lowest prices in months. Certainly that's welcome news for you folks who drink Maxwell House every day. And for you who haven't been getting that wonderful good-to-the-last-drop flavor, now's the time to bring home a blue Maxwell House tin. Find out how much more real enjoyment there is in a cup of coffee when it brings you the world's most famous flavor. Flavor you can count on always, because we're mighty proud of it. And we'll never compromise on the quality of a single pound. For truly good coffee, for today's coffee buy, look for Maxwell House. Featured these days at the lowest prices in months. It's always good to the last drop. <laughs> A day has passed, and in Springfield, the Andersons wait anxiously for the newspaper, which is to carry a retraction on the original story about Betty Anderson, American mother. Buried on one of the back pages, they're going to find the retraction, all right, and it reads like this. The editors of the Springfield Herald regret a slight inaccuracy in yesterday's story concerning the screen test offered to Miss Betty Anderson of this city. We are happy to state that there is no basis of fact in the report that she is to be a mother. In an effort to learn the complete details in this matter, however, the Herald, with its policy of accurate reporting, interviewed Mr. Alfred Kay of Metropolitan Pictures as he was leaving from the Springfield Airport. Mr. Kay confirmed the fact that Miss Anderson had been offered a test and supplied the true facts concerning her refusal. After completing her education in Springfield, he told us, Miss Anderson is going to embark on a career as a lady wrestler. <laughs> the instant coffee with a famous flavor. That's Instant Maxwell House, the happiest combination in coffee. Wonderful, good-to-the-last-drop flavor combined with the convenience and thrift of coffee made instantly in the cup. So easy, no pot, no grounds. So thrifty, saves you real money compared to ordinary coffee. So truly good, pure roaster fresh flavor. Try Instant Maxwell House, the instant coffee with a famous flavor. Instantly good to the last drop. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Don't forget, membership cards for the Robert Young Good Drivers Club are waiting for you at your local NBC station. Get a man-to-man -man or dad-to-daughter pledge and sign up today. Be a good driver. Get your membership card in the Robert Young Good Drivers Club today. Now until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee, always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Now stay tuned in for Screen Guild Theater, which follows immediately over most of these stations. <laughs> Stay tuned for Humphrey Bogart in the Maltese Falcon on NBC.